Hi, I'm Matt from ArcGSB, and welcome to our video series on data mapping, where I cover all of the features of the XML map connector. This is the third video of the series, and I'll be talking about conditionals, which you can use to add conditional output to your mapping. You can find information on mapping basics and the expression editor in prior videos in this series. Conditionals are a simple concept. Adding a condition to an output node means that the node will only actually appear in the output if the condition is true. For example, let's say that we're mapping invoice data, and we only need to map the currency code for the invoice if it is something other than USD, as in US dollars. So the currency code should not appear in the output at all if it is USD. We can accomplish this with a conditional. We'll start by mapping the currency code value as usual. And now we can add the conditional by clicking the filter icon in the destination node. Inside the conditional editor, we can add a rule for the conditional. First, we specify the value in the source that we want to check against. In this case, it is also the currency code. Next, we select the condition operator, which in this case is not equal. And finally, the target value, which in this case is USD. Now we can save this and see the conditional displayed here in the visual designer. This output node has a regular value-to-value -value mapping, but this if keyword lets us know that this output node will only appear if the conditional is true. Now let's talk about condition nodes, which are used to group elements together based on a shared condition. In other words, if I want to add the same conditional to many different output elements, condition nodes provide a convenient way to associate multiple nodes with the same conditional. Condition nodes also introduce a new concept called virtual nodes. These are nodes that show up in the XML map visual designer, but do not show up in the actual output XML. In other words, these are purely logical nodes, providing some mapping logic without being a part of the mapping content. So let's say I have two nodes that I want to appear if the ship to country is Canada. Otherwise, both of these nodes should not show up at all. I could always just add this condition to both nodes individually, but for convenience, I can also add a new condition node by right-clicking and selecting New Condition. Once again, this node won't actually show up in my output, it's simply here to perform some logic. The process for creating the rule is just like the previous section. So the source value here will be the ship to country, the operator here will be equal, and the target value will be CA for Canada. Once I'm done, I can click Save, and now any children of this condition node will only appear in the output if this condition is true, in other words, if we're shipping to Canada. So I can just drag any relevant nodes into the condition node like this to make the condition apply to them. And that covers the two main types of conditional output, conditional filters on output elements and virtual condition nodes to group them together. In the next video in this series, I'll talk about a different type of conditional logic called lookaheads, which are used when you have a repeated structure in the input, but only one of these repetitions has the value that you want to map. Thanks for watching, and as always, you can find more resources and even a free trial of the application at archeusb.com.